You see, there are so many, many uncertainties in this world. God has the answer to them. And in, in the preparing and in praying about this, about uh, the, the answers to life's problems, I, uh, I thought of it, uh, what God provides us as a golden key. And this golden key is like a master key. It opens up the various needs, the, the various doors to the answers, to the, the needs that we as God's people have. I think of the uh, of Christ himself as being the key. And you'll, you'll read about that here in, in, the, in Romans 8th chapter. Then there is a, another door, and this is the door we're going to deal with today. The other doors we're going into in the next six Sunday mornings. You see, so often we, we look for the answers without Jesus. We, we're looking for, for little keys. Now, what's the key to receiving this? What's the key to this? And there, there are books printed by the dozens giving us keys to receiving a, lot, a whole lot of different things. When the Word of God gives us a golden key named Jesus. Hallelujah. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son, and in the, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemns sin, in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the Spirit, but after the flesh. Down to verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba. Father, my very own Father. This is what he's referring to here. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, we may be glorified together. Let's read from verse 26 uh, to the end of the chapter. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Just a little side note here, something that you might like to jot down that will be a help for you. There are often times uh, when people make the statement, uh, God, if this be your will, will you do it? They are, they are uh, put down or, or discouraged in making a statement like that. Because to say, God, if it be your will, uh, is as much as, as uh, saying that maybe it possibly couldn't be God's will to give uh, uh, the thing that is asked. And it is possible, not only possible, but we do it all the time. We ask for things that are contrary to the will of God. Now the reason why the, God's given us the Holy Spirit is so that he can take our prayer and uh, rearrange the words just a little bit so that they make sense to God. And pray for us according to the will of God. Now, the reason he has to do this, we look at a situation and we see just a little bit of the skin of the situation. 
And so we're asking God, God, now we know this is your will. We don't have all the facts. We have maybe 1% of the information we need. But we say, God, we command you, we demand you. You've got to do it because I'm asking in your will. I can't change that. And I'm going to grip my teeth and it's going to be a will of God. God says, grind away. The Holy Spirit says, God, don't answer it the way he says it at all. He's, he's, he doesn't have the basis of information. But I was down there digging around a little bit. And here's the way it ought to be. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit is given to us to help us in our praying. And here he said, he searcheth the hearts, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. In an, another, another companion scripture, he says that he uh, searches, sh searches those deep things, goes in those things that we don't know about. And uh, uh, he, he helps our inabilities to pray. The Holy Spirit does. And so when it comes up before God, he says, now, no, Father, adding to the little tiny bit of information this person knows is, is the rest of it here. And now I will, I am interceding for them according to your will. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for the Holy Spirit? Praise God. Praise God. People that, that have listened to somebody else and haven't they even thought things out for themselves. And they've heard somebody say, what in the world is the purpose of those tongue-talking people? Why, it's a, it's a mess. Well, what's the value of tongues? And they immediately, without even investigating, relegate it to something that's stupid. They're as much as saying, hey, God, didn't you stop and think what mess, kind of a mess this was going to create when you decide to put this in the Bible? They have to admit that it says it in here, but they, they think that, that God didn't use his head in, in creating a thing like this. But uh, God says, uh, uh, take another look. Take another look. I have given you an aid in your life, in every area of your life that you need because your human mind is so limited. We see only what we think the need is. But the Holy Spirit even looks down inside of us and things that have been long been hidden. And as this vehicle of understanding that passes our understanding, we don't know. And that's why Paul said, when I pray in the Spirit, my understanding is unfruitful. It isn't quite getting the point. But the Spirit is making intercession according to the will of God. Hallelujah. You see, if you did it yourself, you would probably say, now, Lord, I know this is my need, and this is my need, and this is my need. But the Holy Spirit, and you, if God gave you those needs, you'd still be in trouble. Because the real thing that you needed would still be there. But the Holy Spirit... Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit helps our inabilities to get the job done. And he prays for us according to the will of God. Hallelujah. And whatsoever is asked according to his will, he hears it. And he does it. And the Spirit makes it possible. Praise God. I wasn't going to preach on that, but it's too good to leave out. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. Jesus in our lives was the hope of glory. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called and whom he called uh, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. He has a pattern here. That word justification means declared innocent. Hallelujah. And those who he, that he declares innocent, uh, there's going to be a time of glory, glorification. Hallelujah. Pattern that God's already lined up. It's already there. Praise God. What shall we then say to these things? 
Here's the key, the crux of it for every faith and background. If God be for us, who can be against us? And as God looks over the world and he, his plan, desire to restore men to himself and his love reaching out to their hearts, if God is for us, can that puny mind be against us? Oh, not if you're willing to give him half a chance. Who can be against us? Then he went on to say why it was so important. He that spared not his own son took the best that heaven had, and but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Here's the line I want you to underline. Shall he not with him also freely give us all things. In other words, what he's saying here is, if he already gave us the best that he had, it wouldn't be too much to ask him to give us those lesser gifts. You follow? He's already given you the best he had. And this best he had is God's golden key. Jesus in your life. Hallelujah. 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 You'll love him this morning. Hallelujah. You know what I'd like to hear, and I believe that God would love to hear it, and the angels of heaven will be jolted into shouting with you. I believe God would like to hear that shout, hallelujah, from this whole congregation. Will you do it right now? Hallelujah. Let's say it again. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That word means praise be to God. Regardless of what kind of a language you speak, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You freely gave us your best already, Lord. And you're not going to deny the lesser gifts. Giving us all things. Praise your wonderful name forever. Praise your wonderful name. Praise your name. The greatest need that believers have around this world is to find the answer to fear. They're afraid. Believers of all kinds are afraid of the uncertainty of standing before God. This is a fact. It, it has largely come because of the because of the uh, misguided feeling that in order for people to be to move toward God they had to be they, they had to ma be made to feel guilty and there's the message of guilt of believers feeling guilty after they've had been in prayer and they've accepted the Lord and the sins have been completely destroyed never to be remembered against them anymore forever if they can somehow uh, uh, re-identify you with sin and these things to make you feel guilty, you probably do some moving toward God. But that's contrary to God's plan and purpose. But because of this type of a message, people have fear in their hearts. And I, I have it in my office every day. Saints of God, afraid of what's coming, afraid to stand before God. What if it doesn't work? What, what, if, what if his blood, what if somehow I haven't quite reached that point of, a, of, of full acceptance with God? What if? What if? A tremendous fear, and I've had to tell them, if you're totally perfect, you've reached clear to the very top of the pole, you still can't be accepted of God. Because no flesh can stand before him, be accepted. So if you're the most perfect person in the world, you'll never make it. This is a little jolting statement to people. But they have to realize it before they can ever rest in the Lord. Because they can't be accepted because they still have their humanity and the faults of humanity. They still 
have the failures. The unrighteousness means your inability to always do the right thing. For God is righteous. He always does the right thing. There's no one in this whole building or in the world that has always done the right thing. So we, we just can't stand before God because of human imperfection. So God had to let us know that he had a better way. That he gave us someone who was totally perfect, sinless, faultless, and righteous. And he said, I am accepting him in your place. So when you come to me wrapped up in his love, I don't see the things that would separate, cause a separation. But I see the reason for accepting you in Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. So I, I wanted to just t uh, touch on this just real uh, uh, lightly this morning. But it's, it is so important. This key opens the door to assurance where we can, we can each day live in peace with God and with ourselves. We can lay our heads down on the pillow at night, not worried. I hope Jesus doesn't come before morning. I hope he doesn't come when I'm not awake, I, just in case I, it might be something I could do to, to, to kind of vault myself into a little higher position with the Lord. But people are afraid. They're living in fear. But the Lord wants us to know that the power of the blood was so great. I remember a number of years ago when God so miraculously let me see the message in blood through the Bible. Oh, what a message it was. He asked me questions I couldn't answer about the blood. But then he told me regarding the power of the blood that it was powerful enough to open the grave. He gave, gave me the scripture over here in Hebrews, the 13th chapter. Beautiful scripture. That the blood had power to open the grave. In the, this 13, verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. The blood, you see, that, that blood of Jesus was not like uh, any other blood that had fallen to the ground. Peter tells us that that blood that has redeemed us was incorruptible and not one drop of that blood was ever lost. God let Paul have a visit to heaven. Paul looked around and he said, hey, what's that over the corner? What is that in that container? They said, that's the blood. Hallelujah. It's still there. It's still there, and it will never, never, ever lose its power. Hallelujah. It stands before God as the indication that we're accepted because of what Jesus has done for us. Power to open the grave. Then you read in, in, uh, in Hebrews, the ninth chapter, that not only is there power to open that grave, Verse 13 and 14. There is power to open heaven itself. For the word tells us, not by the blood of bulls and of goats, but by his own blood, Jesus entered into heaven. He held it up. It's my badge. I can enter. It's my pass into heaven. His blood. By his own blood, he entered into heaven for us. Your faith is in what he has done. The application of Jesus' blood on your life. It's your badge. It's your passport into heaven. Then, when God spoke to me a little further, he showed me that was power to open the, the grave, power to open heaven. Then he said, there's power in that blood even to open his heart for us. Praise God. So we could be accepted. When he sees the blood, his heart is open. Because he remembers what it stands for. And he remembers the completion of his plan. And we are accepted in the beloved. 
Jesus is our key. Praise God to real, real assurance. When that blood started flowing, that night when God allowed me to see it, I saw the, the blood as a, as a great reservoir in God's heart. And his, his love for the world, he took the very best that he had and gave him to the world. And when Jesus died and rose again, the dam in God's heart broke loose. And a great torrent cascaded out over all of the ages, breaking away every barrier. First the great mountain of sin that separated. Then the records that stood in our way were destroyed and wiped away. Then the distance that kept us from God was all removed. We were drawn near to his heart. Uh, then the, the things, the, the death, the seeds of death in our life uh, that sown in every man were attacked by the seeds of his life as his blood flowed through us. Hallelujah. And it's still flowing. So God reached out his hand on Calvary. And he said, put her there. I'm not angry with you anymore. My wrath has been spent. It was diverted from you to Jesus. Hallelujah. We have reason, every reason in the world, to have confidence, to have assurance. Praise God forever. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 5, 19. God was, and this was so important to God, that we read that God was in Christ telling men and women, you can come now. The word says reconciling the world to himself. That reconciliation means making peace. You can come now. You can come now. You can come now. If you have a living Bible, you read the last verse of that chapter and the first verse of, of the sixth chapter, it reads something like this. God took his own son and poured into him all of our sin and our guilt and allowed his wrath to strike him. Then he took all of Jesus' goodness, all of the marks of sonship, and he poured them into us. And let us stand before God complete. Complete in Him. Hallelujah. A friend of mine, who is still a friend of mine, though he's on the other side, because passing that river doesn't put him out of existence. His name was Glenn Horst. Glenn was a missionary to China and caught a very disastrous disease. They brought him back and took him to the hospital in Springfield, Missouri. Glenn, Glenn was in the hospital and the, the disease took his life. And he, he later was brought back. But he said when he was leaving his body, he saw himself down there. And it seemed as though he was taken to the river that he must cross. Because of, of the feelings of uh, having to somehow, by his own merit, achieve a relationship with God. He wasn't, he felt like he hadn't made, been good enough. He hadn't done quite enough. He hadn't merited this. And there was such a fear in his heart. And he, he said, I, I wonder, I'm going to have to cross over that river. And I'm just wondering if what I had was good enough. I'm just wondering. But you see, when, when we serve God, He isn't going to look in our hearts and see whether we have, we have been taken one view of legalism or some other view. We, it just robs us of peace down here, you see. And He was robbed of that peace. But as He stood there looking across that river, so fearful, I wonder if this will stand me good now that I'm going to have to face God. Then all of a sudden, he heard a heavenly choir begin to sing. Jesus paid it all. All 
to him you owe. Though sin had left its crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. And he was transported across that river. He met with the Father. God let him see the glories of heaven. Then he said to him, I wanted you to experience this because there are people believers who are afraid to come to the river because they're not good enough because they they haven't merited what they feel a the high enough position in God but he said I, I'm going to send you back Glenn said he didn't want to come back but God said I want you to go back God took him back and he said he looked in the room as he came in he could see himself lying there in that still form he looked on the dresser in that room and there was the death certificate all signed he'd been gone quite a long time he God allowed him to enter back into his body the records are still in the hospital there in Springfield of this great experience but Glenn came back full of strength and courage and a brand new ministry and his ministry until the time that the Lord took him home to to uh, stay was based on this theme Jesus paid it all it was based on the theme that it's not only good in this life to trust him but you can count on him to stand by you. You can count on him against that day that he will keep that which you've committed unto him. The keeping of your soul, see? That's what you're committing to him, really. You can count on him. So that when you stand at the river, Glenn's message was, it's still good. He looks for the marks of the blood and judgment passes by. Those who know Jesus, those who may have had struggles even in their heart and their life and fears come against them over and over again. But today you're going to rest in what Jesus has done. And as he tells us in Hebrews, the third chapter, there is a rest for the people of God. And those that enter into this rest have ceased from their own struggles. Uh, they've been able to recognize what Jesus has done. They found a key that's marked God's golden key, which is Jesus. And they've heard that message, Christ in you is your hope of glory. Not something else. Jesus in you. Oh, hallelujah. You cannot ever stand before him in your own strength but God has given you a key that I, that your uncertainty has been unable to find answers to but that wonderful key Jesus in your life uh, Jesus Jesus and his blood applied uh, is your key to assurance and regardless of what you face in life, when you have that assurance that Jesus paid it all, all is well. Hallelujah. And as you sing it, you're saying, Lord, my faith is in what Jesus has done. He paid it all. Nothing I can do to, to make it work. Jesus paid it all. And watch the peace as it comes like a tidal wave over your heart. Let's sing it together. Jesus paid it all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He And, and open it but I would like to read this verse to you and then I'd like for you to sing it to, 
And when before the throne I stand in him complete. Jesus died, my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. God wants you to repeat it here. He wants you to tell it to the world. He wants you to tell it to the devil. He wants you to tell it to yourself. Uh, he wants you to tell it to him. Uh, and as you come across uh, with that blood on your life, uh, your badge, your entrance, uh, and God remembering those words, those people who pass with the blood, give them entrance.